Folks, now, great pleasure joining me with Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson on Foreign Relations Committee and Budget and Commerce. Senator Johnson, sir, good to see you. I had a couple of things I wanted to raise with you. One of them is more insanity over the subject of Iran. And apparently, not only are we getting closer and closer to a deal with Iran, which I couldn't imagine anything worse, but we're also, I just heard this today, perhaps you heard it too, sir, um, the White House or the State Department is going to reclassify the Revolutionary Guard. Not, they're no longer going to be terrorists, the Revolutionary Guard, the biggest terrorist killers in the Middle East and God knows where. What do you think of that, Senator? Iran, Revolutionary Guard. Well, Larry, it'd be awful. Uh, it'd be outrageous, quite honestly. You know, th this administration, President Biden, has weakened this this country across the board with its open borders, out of control spending, record inflation, the embarrassing and dangerous surrender in Afghanistan. But maybe one of the most embarrassing things is the way he went crawling back to Iran to get back into that JCPOA. And Iranians wouldn't even meet with us. So guess who's negotiating the deal for us? China and Russia. Mm -hmm. You think they're going to negotiate in our best interests? But uh, we, we've had a couple people apparently uh, on that negotiating team resign because the results are so awful. They've leaked the results. And no, we're, we're going to lift sanctions on all kinds of terrorists, in, including the Revolutionary Guard, uh, probably deliver billions of dollars in cash to release hostages, which was just incentivize more hostage taking. It's, it's jaw dropping what this administration is contemplating doing. I, I hope it becomes public. I hope public pressure prevents this uh, administration from doing another deal with Iran. It'd be a tragedy. At a minimum, it should be deemed a treaty come before the Senate where there'd be no way it could be ratified. Well, that was my next question, sir, that I think they're going to... Look, they've done these Iranian negotiations all during the Ukrainian crisis. They've been doing this, you know, so nobody in the public is looking at it very much. So they're going to sign a deal literally in the dead of night. And then my question is, can you some way... I don't know how you do this... Uh, the Senate has advice and consent, but they're not calling it a treaty. It wasn't called a treaty. Remember, Obama went around it, too, when we did the first Iran deal. Um, can you bring it to the floor of the Senate? Can you stop this thing? Well, it was a, my amendment uh, during that process, my amendment, that would have deemed it a treaty. We actually had Republicans voting against that, uh, that amendment. So yeah, my, my guess is Democrats will remain in lockstep, and there's probably no way for Congress to force it to be a deemed a treaty, I think we could do it, but we would need overwhelming veto-proof majorities. And again, Democrats are you know, pretty well hanging together. Is there some way, you know, you and others who are interested in this can make speeches? And I mean, we need a media assault. That's the reason I'm bringing it up today. And I, I, I've mentioned it before. I mean, this has to see the light of day. I don't think most Americans are aware of how close we are to putting this thing together. They're a bunch of thugs. They're a bunch of killers. They lie, cheat, and steal. And they're, they're going to they're go for nuclear weapons. And we're going we're gonna to let them sell oil. We're we going to justify this because we need oil? I mean, that's even more preposterous. Well, we have been talking about this. But remember, remember Larry, the, the mainstream media, the legacy, the corporate media, whatever you want to call them, the big tech social media giants, they are the communication apparatus for the Democrat Party, for the Biden administration. Remember, they got him elected, even though he campaigned from his basement. So they're going to cover up for him. So this isn't going to get the coverage to develop the public outrage that uh, this really should be developing. Senator, in the last minute and a half, I just want to ask you, in my lifetime, and maybe yours, will there ever be a reduction in domestic government spending, which really is at the source of this big inflation we're experiencing. Do you think they'll ever cut domestic spending, sir, in our lifetime? You know, we, we can uh, hope and pray, but uh, let's face it, uh, I warn people about bipartisan uh, agreements because on a bipartisan basis, uh, members of Congress love mortgaging our children's future, and that's just what happened last week. $1.5 trillion omnibus spending bill, 2,700 pages, nobody read it. Uh, a couple hundred pages of earmarks, about $10 billion worth, even though Republicans, it's our conference position not to support uh, earmarks, and yet we had a bunch of Republicans vote for them. So it's really tough. I was listening to the, your excellent interview with the, 
the, the renowned Art Laffer. Yeah. I've been predicting stagflation for well over a year, mm. not based on economic models, but because I'm talking to business people. I started a business in the midst of stagflation when price increases were expected and accepted. We're right back there again. We've been in that position for well over a year with this massive amount of deficit spending. Yes, sir. And the Federal Reserve is accommodating it every step of the way. Well, Senator Johnson, one can only hope the cavalry is on the way. I just hope it gets here soon enough. We'll talk soon, sir. Thank you for helping us out.